the federal government has funded 422 delegates to COP28 summit, says the minister. And uh, there's also of the press that we will be doing this morning. And by the way, good morning and welcome to the breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. My name is Rume Paulson. It's going to be a wonderful day. Yesterday I was so sure it was also already the 12th of, <laughs> of the month. I don't know. Uh, days are moving fast and fast and fast. But today, uh, fortunately, I remember the date quite clearly. It is the 5th of December. 2023. That means we have 20 more days and then it's Christmas. But the entire season is the season for Christ. That's right. Yeah. I don't know how you are preparing, uh, but uh, I'm preparing to go to church. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't everyone? <laughs> well, you know, there are some people beyond the church. They, that preparation for Christmas, uh, church is just one of those things. But the major thing that they're going to spend their time, spend their money, it's not even church. But this year, we'll go, we'll go plenty for church. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, be... I'm, sure, I'm sure there are other ways to celebrate. So even if you're not spending so much money, as long as you're sharing love with your family and your friends, that, mm -hmm. that works. That's a good way to spend Christmas. Yeah, sharing love. That's mm -hmm. what we've always been saying. And we've always told you that sharing love doesn't always mean that you're going to give someone a fat check for you to say that I've shared love or for the next person to know that you've shared this love. There are people, even the richest of us, uh, need some things from the people that you feel cannot even give them anything. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, my people say, um, it is in the poor man's house that you can find a grinding stone. So anytime the rich man is in need of a grinding stone, he comes to the, poor, comes to the poor man. So yeah. everybody needs something that another person can give. Yeah. And I always say a community that is full of rich men or only rich people is probably the poorest community because mm. everybody is a multimillionaire. So who will work for the other? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you find out that you, you are now poor. All mm -hmm. of you are very poor. Yeah. So everybody needs the other person, mm -hmm. the poor ones and the rich ones. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, nobody is actually really poor. Yeah. You know? And I think even in this time of sharing love, you should also share love to yourself. Yeah. Be able to give yourself grace. You've come so far, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, you're doing amazing. And, you know, just take time out to relax. I mean, this is a season of sharing love. So share love to yourself. You can, you know, watch something, watch mm -hmm. a Christmas movie, mm -hmm. go out with your loved ones. Just do something that will make you happy in the season. Spend some time with yourself, yes. even if you're not going to a very, very um, uh, expensive place. Mm -hmm. You can go and be at peace with nature. Sometimes yeah. you go to a waterfall, you go to a canopy walkway, you go mm -hmm. to... Uh, be, thank God Lagos has a lot of beaches. Some mm -hmm. of them are free. Just go there and sit and, you know, just think about life. Yeah. when you're sitting there, right there because you need to love yourself before you can give love to anybody else. That's right. You cannot pour from an empty cup. I love, I love to say that you definitely cannot pour from an empty cup. So you need to fill yourself up mm -hmm. before you're able to pour into other people. And cry, like, I mean, I'm Christian. So for people who are Christians, God loves you. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you should love yourself and then love others. Well, even if you're a Muslim as well, God mm -hmm. loves, God loves you. you. I mean, At the end of the day, we find out that this thing about God is just a matter of terminology. Mm -hmm. we, we all believe in a force greater than us. Uh, and whatever name you call it, it no matter how you see it, it's like uh, the story of a, an elephant where blind people went to see an elephant and, or to feel an elephant. Mm -hmm. Because they can't, they can't see. see. Yeah. Some, some went to the trunk, some went to the, the tusk, some went to... So all of them were describing the, the elephant same according thing. to how they were able to feel it. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a, a complete picture. So mm -hmm. that's how I think in Christianity, or in religion, religion. we all try to describe God. Yeah. At the end of the day, God is love. Mm -hmm. Whatever name you call it, it boils down to love. And if your religion has no love, then it's not a religion. Because that's even the right. traditional religion, African traditional religion, talks about love. Mm -hmm. So try to love one another, and this is the season to share love. doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or not. That's just right. share love. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the spirit of um, Tuesday, <laughs> we have Tech Tuesday, and we're just going to take our quote of the day, and we'll just banter on it.
Okay, that was our quote for the for the day. Um, it's talking about technology. So mm, we said technology cannot replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it's awesome. It's, it's transformational. transformational. Exactly, exactly. And I, I think it's a very, very important thing to note. Um, there's a lot of fear that technology is going to take, take over, over. Uh, you know, our existence and. and I hope that never gets it get, never gets to the point where we all will need to just be sitting home because we have something to send to the market. We have something to send even to. We have a place that we can watch um, uh, preaching online. Mm -hmm. We have everything. We just mm -hmm. sit in our rooms and we don't get to do everything, yeah. anything at all. I'm not sure it will lead to our life being better. I think it will lead to our life being shorter. Hmm. That's what I think. Well, I, I think technology is great. I mean, there are a lot of things people Very, have been able, yeah. been able to accomplish with technology. And like the court said, you know, in the hands of the good people, mm -hmm. it is transformational. Yeah. Because we're talking about the advent of mobile phones. We're talking about um, the Internet. All of these things are technology. Even if you look at it, computers are technology. Mm. Cars are technology. Everything. So everything started, like, even from all through the days of the old, the scientists that we know, mm -hmm. just the technologies, and this is where we are now. Now we're in the um, era of AI, right? Mm -hmm. However, there are people that are saying, you know, your jobs are <laughs> on the line <laughs> at the moment because AI is coming to take over. Now you can just go on your phone and type something and AI brings out all the data that you need. Mm -hmm. But then you're learning as well because this, this is a wealth of resources that you can get. So I don't think it would um, end our jobs, like people like to say, or um, change things for the worse. I think it will be better. It will be transformational, yeah, just the, like the, the court said. The court also has an underlying warning that if it is in the right hands, it yes. will do, be transformational. So what we need to know is that no matter how good technology is, it should never be a 100% alternative for, for human interaction and all that. For instance, you go to a family, they're having dinner, or they're having a time that should have been family time. Everybody's mm -hmm. on their phone. Nobody mm -hmm. cares what the next person is talking about. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't like this yes. before. That was, there were times families could bond, mm -hmm. you know. They could talk to each other, interact and all that. Even it, the kids can go now, outside to play. To play. Now, now everyone is playing on their phone yes. or gaming. Yeah, so it, a lot of, some things that can be discouraged should be discouraged. Yes. You know, you do a little bit of what technology has given you the opportunity mm -hmm. to be able to do easily. Mm -hmm. But do not forget the human factor because that really is what makes us uh, yeah. humans. Yeah. And the more you grow old, the more you know that you need physical people more than the yeah. ones that you can find uh, on the internet or yeah. that technology yeah. has given you. Yeah, I think we should not seclude ourselves because naturally we're social creatures. Yes. You need to be able to interact with other people. You see them physically. You know, technology cannot give you a hug. Mm. No, right? Do you understand? Even if you're seeing someone smile on you know, the, the other side of the camera, it's still not the same like being there with them. So it's important that... There is, there is, it just reminded me, there is this um, app, I think, yeah, an app that was created by the Chinese that was teaching people how to smile and another one how to kiss. So <laughs> you're calling your, 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 your friend or your wife, your husband or something, and you're kissing the phone or you're, you're, you're that, learning that, how to smile. That's weird. It's, like, weird. it's a natural it's thing to so smile. How, how would that be the same as when you're the doing the real thing? Yeah. I, I see you smile. Mm hmm Smile. See? <laughs> I see you smile. There's something that you know it, you just exude when you smile mm -hmm. physically. Yeah. It's not just when you, you even change the, the mood. You change the atm the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, your aura. Because when someone is physically there with you, they can feel your presence, your energy, your aura. Mm -hmm. So it changes everything. And that way, when you interact um, physically, it's, it's more wholesome. Mm -hmm. I think that's the word to use. Mm -hmm. It's more wholesome. So we shouldn't, uh, technology is very good. Everything, very, very good. But we shouldn't let technology uh, take over humanity as it were. Okay, right now, for instance, you want to write a book, you just need a topic. You put it, type it in, AI will bring you everything. all everything. So you can write a book and all that. But we know that if you fail to use your brain, 
your brain dies. Yeah. Just as just as every other thing, you yeah. know, it just gets paralyzed. Mm -hmm. You're <laughs> not tasking it. You're, you're not, not tasking it. Yeah. yeah. So you just have AI. So we might be forming. Um, we might be uh, giving birth to a generation of people who may not want to think. Mentally lazy. That. Yes, mentally lazy. That's the word mm -hmm. to use and all that. So let's use technology. Like, let's be the, 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 the right people to handle technology, technology. like the quote Yeah, said. so we can be transformational. Yes. I mean, with everything, there's pros and cons. Mm -hmm. And um, if you abuse something, it gets, gets bad. So it's, it's, you have to, you must find that balance. So use technology, but use it for the greater good. Don't be lazy and don't even use it to go and scam somebody or create bombs or, you know, like don't use it for the evil things. Use it for the good things. And Some, some of these things that are even good, I, I don't know how the psychological effect will be and how, the next, uh, how tomorrow will be because of the good things that we're seeing today. For instance, um, there is a natural bond between a mother and a child. The mother carries a child, the mother gives beds, and then the mother carries the child and feeds the child and all that. Now, you can just go donate something, put it in an incubator somewhere, and then the child comes out. Yeah. And you don't have any problem. Or you go and give to someone else to hold for surrogate. you. Yes, a surrogate mom to hold for you. And then uh, you just go and collect your baby back mm -hmm. and all that. I don't know how, how these people that are born this way in 50 years to come, what kind of grandparents or parents they will be and all that. I, mm. I, I'm, I'm old school. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're so quite some traditional. Of, some of the things that sh I think should be natural, that we are just using technology because it is possible to do all these things. I don't know how it will turn out to be. And it's worse in a place like Nigeria where you find technology, um, the way we use technology, we discard everything else that we have ever known. Mm. We just discard it. For instance, now we have phones. You still have pay phones in America. You don't have it in Nigeria. Mm. You still have a lot of things that are still existing in America, but you don't have it in Nigeria. So we just leave those things behind. The traditional things are the worst hit. We leave them behind. The food we eat, we leave them behind. The, the things we do, the communion we have with our 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 kings we don't have that anymore we just leave everything behind and move on i don't know how well, that, that i think at the end of the day just use it the right way and find that balance but and who will as, define what the right way is well i think you should be able to if you're abusing it then you know it's bad how would you know well, <laughs> sometimes we'll, you wouldn't we'll, even know well, we'll find out anyways let's move over to our top trending topics um so the first one says federal government task mdas on cost cutting measures the federal government has expressed concern over the country's dwindling revenue and tax ministries, departments and tax agencies, MDAs and um, the federal and state government on cost cutting measures in order to reduce the cost of governance in the country. The head of efficiency unit, um, Federal Ministry of Finance, Abuja, Mrs. Adebusola Ajiboye, spoke yesterday in Uyo, Akwaibom State Capital, during a sensitization training exercise on activities of the unit organized by the Ministry for MDAs in the South South Zone. Ajiboye, who highlighted some initiatives of the efficiency unit um, to include continuous awareness and sensitization, price checker initiative, less paper initiatives, stressed that the aim of the workshop was to equip the participant with the tools they need towards effective use of public funds. She appealed that the efficiency units should be replicated in all the MDAs in the country because of the critical role the unit plays in prudent management of public resources. In her words, in quotes, the sensitization workshop provides us with an opportunity to explore the various initiatives, policies, and strategies employed by the efficiency unit to ensure the optimal utilization of the resources at every, every level of the government. She described it as a platform for engaging in meaningful dialogue, sharing experiences, and fostering collaborations across different sectors while aiming to equip all participants with the knowledge and tools that contribute to efficient and effective use of public resources. Mm. Speaking further, she explained that by promoting efficiency, reducing wastage, and improving value for money in government spending, the unit contributes significantly towards achieving the nation's development goals. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, it's it's a good advice. Cut cost. Yeah. But um, you know, 
they say the federal government is worried, the government is worried that uh, the cost of governance is so much. And then they are doing the do as I say, not as I do mm -hmm. kind of thing, and it's so bad. Um, like the previous government said, change begins with you. Mm -hmm. And if the political class cannot show us that they are here because of the people, it will be difficult because the civil servants are the ones that do all the work mm -hmm. that the, the politicians enjoy. Yes. And then they are going to work for 35 years and retire with a one-month salary of a politician. Mm. And then you're still showing us that there's money to spend and you're expecting us to do what you're asking us to do. Example has to come from the political class. And no matter how we see it, it, it rises and falls with leadership. And the leadership is given by the political cl class. Mm. They provide the leadership. Uh, the civil servants are civil servants. They mm -hmm. serve mm -hmm. us in all the capacity that they have. Yeah. But if the politicians do not do what they're supposed to do, nobody else will, will want to look at them at all. Yeah, like you said, it, it, it's all about leadership and it's what you tell these people, that's what they'll follow because they follow your instructions. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think as a nation, I, I think one of our guests yesterday said something about um, Nigerians love to waste resources. So as a nation, obviously she starts yep, with- You're avoiding the word he used. Well, I can't <laughs> use those words. <laughs> but yes, he just, in general, he meant we waste, you know, we waste resources mm -hmm. and I think we should all have like a check in words and say, why are we wasting so much? And you cannot waste public funds because we're talking about the economy right now. It's, our economy is not so great, let's be honest. And if any way we can reduce costs, that's what should happen. Because if you were running a business, that's the same thing you would do. You won't, you know, go and spend lavishly. You would say we need to make profits. And so that's what we should all do in Nigeria right now. And even the government, the political class, they should start with that. I wish something that came up in the last administration could have continued. Uh, body language. Yeah. When uh, the former president, Mohammed Buhari, came into the saddle, everybody was afraid of his body language. Mm -hmm. Everybody was careful even spending money, mm -hmm. uh, let alone taking money that did yeah. not belong to them, until maybe they found out that he didn't know a lot of the things that he, he should have been holding them mm -hmm. uh, accountable for. And then they started, you know, doubling <laughs> the kind of stealing they were stealing and all that under his nose, mm -hmm. a man of integrity. I agree, he has uh, some sort of integrity, but his awareness of his environment may not have been top notch. So yeah. they exploited that and yeah. did what they, they did. Uh, so, but what, that goes to say, if you show example by the kind of life that you live, for instance, if uh, President Tunubu comes out and says, because of this uh, cost, of governance, I will not have the kind of uh, convoy, for instance, mm -hmm. that I have, or I will, not have, I will not have the fleet of airplanes that I have in the presidential fleet uh, because we want to cut costs, we yeah. sell some of them and all that. Everybody will be looking like, okay, okay yeah. I should not this be found wanting exactly. just by doing an action that you don't even need to tell the Senate or anything. And especially now that the Senate and the House of Reps, when you find them wearing hats, you know, they wear the eight, mm -hmm. the eight symbol, you know, mm -hmm. the, which is uh, President Tinubu's uh, symbol, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, a signature uh, cap. Everybody mm -hmm. wears it. So they are more or less his boys and girls. So if he shows an example, I'm sure a lot of them will just fall in line. Oh, exactly. guys doing this. I know one will come and say we want to renovate the house of this for so, so billion. billion. We want to buy cars for this. Because you're already seeing that, I mean, the person who's at the helm of, you know, the affairs okay. is already taking these measures. And you too, you will want to follow suit. Anyway, um, the president went to the um, COP28 and he was telling them how the government is trying so much that we are going to buy a hundred buses. And here is a story of a federal high court sitting in Sokoto. Um, it has dismissed a suit filed by former governor of Zamfara State, Belo Matawale, over the ownership of vehicles he took away on leaving office in May 2023. In June, the police went to houses belonging to houses, <laughs> belonging to Matawale to take possession of the vehicles as ordered by the court. A statement issued on Monday by Suleiman Bala Idris, the spokesperson of the current governor of the Northern Nigerian state, Dauda Lawal, stated that the federal government or the federal high court rejected Matawale's claim over the ownership of the vehicles. According to the statement, the immediate past governor of Zamfara, who is the current minister of state for defense, um, 
along with members of his cabinet and had taken away all official vehicles belonging to the state government, leaving the administration of Governor Lawal with nothing to use. Mm -hmm. I hear there are about 50 or more of these vehicles in the possession of the people who have left office. Mm -hmm. Okay, 50 vehicles in one government house. And when they left, they left with these mm. cars, so many of them. And the federal government is going to buy, is going to, we've not seen them, mm. going to buy 100 buses for the entire Nigeria, which is 220 million, which means you have like uh, 2 million plus to a bus. That's what is going to happen. Pretty much. So how much, how many buses does Lagos State alone have? Mm. The BRT buses, are they not up to 100? No, I'm sure okay. they're more than. So, so now you're buying 100 for the whole 36 Nigeria, states 36 and states, the 200 FCC. 200 and something million. And you're carrying that to COP20 where the world leaders are. And going with 1,411 well, people they said to they say this. Well, they didn't take that much. <laughs> We're going to talk about that in the hot topic anyway. anyway the okay, thing. so our next top trending is NAF denies bombing Kaduna village as army apologize. The Nigeria Air Force um, has distanced itself from the bombing of a village in Kaduna State, an attack in at Tundumbiri village, Igabi local government area of the state on Sunday night left many dead and others injured. In a statement, Air Commodore Edward Gabwet, the Director of Public Relations and Information of NAF, absolved the airmen of blame. He noted the news making the rounds alleging that the Nigerian Air Force NAF aircraft accidentally killed innocent civilians in Kaduna is false. He further explained that the NAF had not conducted any air operations within Kaduna State and environs within that 24-hour period. Meanwhile, authorities of the Nigerian army have taken responsibility for the Sunday night bomb attack which led to the death of dozens of civilians. The army said the villagers were inadvertently affected during its routine mission against the terrorists on the axis. The overseeing commissioner of the Ministry of Internal Security and Home Affairs, Kaduna State, Samuel Aruwan, made the clarification. He spoke after the State Security Council meeting on Monday, revealing that during the meeting, the state government received briefings on the Sunday night attack. The heads of security agencies, Islamic clerics, and traditional rulers were at the meeting presided over by the Deputy Governor Adiza Sabuwa Balarabe. At the meeting, the General Officer Commanding One Vision um, Nigerian Army Major General Valentine Okoro explained that the circumstances that led to the unfortunate attack, the General Officer Commanding One Division Nigerian Army Major General V.U. Okoro explained during the meeting that the Nigerian army was on routine mission against terrorists, but inadvertently affected members of the community. Um, According to a survivor, over 30 died immediately when Tundumbiri village was bombed by a flying object and killing locals who were attending a religious ceremony called Malud on Sunday night. It's quite a sad story. It, it's very sad. And I don't know, it sounds casual to me, what the, the apology that the the army is giving. How do you give apology, just apology, and nobody is being sanctioned or mm -hmm. something? The annoying part is, it wasn't like they were dealing on uh, the intelligence that they have gotten. Mm. They said it's a routine yeah. activity that they do to chase uh, terrorists, terrorists and all that. Routine, which means you do it all the time. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have credible intelligence or new intelligence that made them to go and bomb it. And they didn't know that there was, was a village. Yeah, it's, with civilians. It's, it's annoying. I think a lot of people should have to answer for this. Mm -hmm. People who are dead cannot be brought back. But we should start to see that there's, there are consequences for anything uh, yes. that happens. In Israel right now, there is a war with Hamas. Mm -hmm. The president or the prime minister is at the fore of this war. But he's still facing charges in court of fraud and other mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm. and all. They're not saying, because we are at war, let's finish the war first. Mm -hmm. He's still charging the, uh, facing, facing those charges, ones. Yeah. So if he's convicted now or something happens and the laws of that nation says that he must step down, he will step down for yes. somebody else. So why do we keep just... Now they have apologized to the people. What else? So what do? happens? What happens now? How do you? How do you even? And this is not the first time. The other time it was in air force and mm -hmm. all that. Now mm -hmm. it's the army and this. They are beating their chest and saying it is us. 
routine. Uh, so exercise. the people have just died for nothing, basically. No one is going to jail. No one is being persecuted. Like nothing. Nothing. That's and it's, it, sorry. And that's it. How do you say sorry over a life? It's, 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 Everyone has to be brought to just like, there's, there should be justice for these people. Mm -hmm. um, if you do something, you should own up to it, one, which is what they've done. But then what are the consequences? You can't just bomb a village killing over 30 people, 30, imagine 30 people in this room and everyone is gone out. Uh, and those, those are the ones accounted for because yes. they're celebrating Malud. Malud mm -hmm. is the, it's like the Christmas. For yes, the, the for, 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 for the Muslims. And yes. then you just drop a bomb on them and 30 died immediately. It's ridiculous. What about those who are in hospital? They may die again. Yeah, and with injuries. We understand that there's, there's, um, there's, there's um, a search party, more mm. or less, for the people who are missing. So mm. maybe more than that that's, have died and all that. And that's a lot say, of casualties. Just say sorry, it was us. Yeah, we were doing routine exercise. Even one life matters. So talk about like so many people, but... And it's, it's so sad. We, we pray for the repose of the souls of those who died and um, for the people who lost uh, their loved ones. Uh, we pray that um, you'll be consoled. Yeah. No, nothing can replace a loved one, but at least be consoled and have the strength to carry on. At least the people who died would want that, yeah. that you should uh, continue with life even after or without them. Yeah. We have to take a short break now. When we return, we'll look at the papers and... Uh, other things will follow. Stay with us.